Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Hannah. Thank you very much for joining me. So we're starting a big make today and if you saw my last video you'll know exactly what it's about but in case you missed it, one, I'll link it above and two, we are going to be making a trench coat. So in my previous video I explained a bit about the fabrics that I'm using, the pattern that I'm using, went through, altered the pattern pieces accordingly, um, made a few changes for sizing, made a few changes for aesthetic, and then today I've got everything cut out, ready to go, and we're going to start on the make. I've just spent a minute looking at the instructions now, and I thought I'd done all the prep, but there was actually something that I'd missed. So it says to interface sort of all of the pieces around the neckline or any curved seams. So I'll show you on the instructions in a second, but it basically says to do a strip of about six centimeters round any neckline pieces, the top of the sleeve, stuff like that. And then there's some main pieces, so the collar and the front that also get interfaced. Um, so I've got interfacing here, I'm gonna do that now, um, and then we're ready to start stitching. This is what it shows you. So you can see, you can see there, the dashed bit is where the interfacing is. So it's basically saying round the collar, round the sleeves, and then there are some pieces up here that get fully interfaced, like the front and the collar and the belt. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do first. I've just got an iron-on interfacing, which I'll cut to size, iron in place, and then we can start on the sewing. So the interfacing didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. I've cut all the pieces. I've still got pieces to iron on, um, but I've done the first few that I'll need to use. So the next step is we are going to do the bust starts on the front pieces. So I'm going to get the pattern, mark on the parts where it sort of locates where the dart's going to go, and then stitch that. The one thing to remember when doing darts is just to not use a reverse stitch so you can knot the threads afterwards to keep them in place um, but a reverse stitch will just make it pucker and look a little bit bulky at the sort of the peak of the dart. My bust darts are done. I've just given them a little press on my tailor's ham to make sure they're all sitting nicely um, and are nice and ironed. And then we're going to have a look at what's next. So the next step is actually to serge round all the pieces, which is overlock. If you're also English and had no idea what serge meant, it's overlock. Um, but because this pattern was made for a woven fabric and actually I'm using a knitted fabric, it's not needed for the fabric that I'm using. So I'm going to leave that step. Um, if anything needs strengthening, I'll um, like stay stitch around the edges. Um, but at the moment I'm going to leave that. So the next thing to do is the pockets. So it says here, sew the welt pocket. Sew the welt pockets. Sew the welt pieces together along outer edges. Grade and clip seam allowance. Turn the welt right side out and press carefully. So that is what I'm going to do. I need to have a look at what pieces I've got because I can't remember whether it's a main piece and a lining or two main pieces. So I'm going to have a look at that and follow the pocket instructions. The pattern did actually say for four pieces of the main fabric to be cut for the welt pockets. Um, but because of the thickness of this fabric and because the pattern was designed for more of like a twill or a rose, oh, a twill or a woven fabric, I've actually decided to line the welt pockets with the lining. Also because I love the lining and a pop of that when you flick your pocket up is absolutely fine with me. Just one thing to note, the pattern is quite weird on seam allowances. So for these pocket bits it says a seam allowance of 8mm which I've never seen anywhere else before. And the standard seam allowance on the pattern is 1cm not 1.5cm. So it's just something to keep an eye out. For the 8mm I'm just lining it up with the edge of the foot. Um, because that's just under a centimetre, so it would be about right. But just something to keep an eye out if you're following this pattern as well. 
pockets are done so these just got turned the right way out and top stitched so there's the lining there's the front um, on both and they look nice and smart so if I'm being honest pockets are always a bit confusing and when I made my blazer I actually mucked up the pockets a little bit to what the pattern said um, so I've been taking a bit of time to properly read through all of the steps and work out exactly what I'm doing and I think I know what I'm doing um, but I don't have tons and tons of confidence on this but I'll show you what I think okay so this is where the pocket goes on the main piece of fabric and I have interfaced behind it just to strengthen it up so we have three marks we have those two which is where the sort of center cutting line is and then we have two marks above and two marks below so the instruction I've got up to is this one where it says pin or baste the welt right on the right side of the fabric interface side up when it says interface side I think that is the underneath of the pocket because when you allow for the next steps as well if you put the pocket that way up and then we've also got some interfacing or an inter a facing piece for the welt as well so then that gets stitched on underneath you cut down the middle you that gets stitched that way technically um you cut down the middle you turn this out you turn this over and it should then give you a nice pocket hopefully i think that's how it works um what i also wanted to do was i also wanted to add a little bit of leather trim in the pockets because there's going to be a lot of leather sort of higher up in the garment and then on the sleeves but to bring it down a little bit the pockets are a nice place to put a little bit more detail so what I wanted to do was have a little tiny um, bit of leather trim just poking out the top where the welt flap is sewn on so I have I've cut this little bit of leather here which I'm hoping I can stitch underneath the pocket like that and then when the pocket flaps over we'll have just a little bit of the leather showing at the top the flaps are done on both the pieces now so we've got a nice little insert there and the next step is the pocket bag also I'm very very happy on how this little leather trim has turned out I think there'll be a little bit of finishing off just as far as like hand stitching making sure it all holds in place nicely um, but I think it's a really lovely detail so I'm pleased that I took the time to add that on. I'm working to get an overlocker set up at some point soon but because I don't have one at this stage the first step that I'm going to do for the pocket bags is just zig zigzag stitch around the edge um, just because I know that this lining fabric is going to fray so if I put in a little bit of, little bit of effort now um, hopefully we'll prevent some of that as I'm making the garment. Okay, the pocket bag, so I have just zigzagged around the edges as I said I would to stop the fraying. And then we've got a smaller piece and a bigger piece. So the smaller piece gets attached first and this gets attached to the facing. Um, so I'm going to do a normal one centimeter seam allowance down the facing, attach that and then that will fold that way. Then the longer piece here gets attached to the seam where the pocket flap is. So that gets attached on there and then you stitch one pocket to the other pocket and hopefully you've got your full bag there ready to go. morning guys so it's a brand new day and we're going to look at what's next on this coat so last week I finished the pockets and that's about all I got done um just a lack of concentration you know sometimes you just aren't in the mood for it or you've not got enough concentration for it it was one of them days but we've got all day today so we'll see how much I can get done um and how much concentration I've got 
Um, so, the next thing that we look at is actually constructing the coat. Um, so I'm going to do the centre back seam and then attach the sides onto that. It looks like we leave the shoulders for the time being and that will come with the cape. Um, but we've still got to finalise bits on the cape since I altered the pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew the centre backs together and then we will see where we go from there. So I've got the two back pieces right sides together and I'm going to stitch a line all the way down here, it's at a one centimetre seam allowance and then we take out this notch and stop there. So we don't continue down the rest of the length of the coat, it's just to this point here. finish the seam I'm going to press this flap to one side and then press the seam allowance open so it sits nicely. So next I am stitching the front sections to the back. Um, again right sides together and a one centimetre seam allowance. I've just stitched the side seams to the front to the back sections and now before I do anything else I'm going to go and try it on and have a look at the fit. So if you remember, I made this to a size 10, which sort of fit on the bust and the hips area, but was too big on the waist. So I'm gonna decide whether I want to take it in at all before looking at the cape sections. Okay, so I'm having a look at this on now, and it's looking really good actually. So has it got room within this? Absolutely, but if you imagine sort of You've got your fold over bits there, you've got it crossed over double breasted there and then you've got a belt on. I think that having more fabric with this sort of, because it's lightweight and it's lightweight and it's drapey, I think it's going to give more sort of drama and shape and um, a really beautiful silhouette with me actually leaving it a little bit bigger, especially when we looked at the Dior coat it had pleats in it that gave it more sort of drama. Because I'm not putting the pleats in this, I actually think that um, the belt's gonna do that. And if I'm wearing it loose and I'm done, I will probably have belt loops around the back that sort of ties it in place so that it gives a more fitted shape. And then equally, if I've done it up and then the belt's on, it will give it more shape and a little bit more drape on the bottom. So I quite like it like this. It's going to make my life a lot easier leaving it this size. Um, so if I'm liking it like this, I'm going to leave it um, and carry on with the next steps. So whilst I've got it on, I thought I would have a look at the cape pattern piece and decide whether I wanted to cut it out of the calico and make up a twirl first or whether I was happy to cut it out of the proper fabric. So this is the front piece pinned on here. And my aim was to make sure that it came underneath the flap, which it does. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to like line it, back it with something. So there'll be a seam allowance coming out of this and then it will be added onto the coat. Um, but I think that that will actually sit really nicely. So it comes nicely under the bust. It doesn't come at a weird point. And yet because my waist is down here, I've got enough gap um between this finishing and my waist especially once you've got a centimetre taken off this um so i think i'm happy to cut it the bit that might get altered is whether we've got too much coming around here um but that's the easy bit to alter um because that can just get lost in the seam allowance um so yeah i'm going to go ahead and cut the cape out of the leather I think I'm going to line it with the lining fabric, but I'm going to have a look at how much I've got left. Um, but I don't want anything heavyweight because the leather's quite heavy and sturdy anyway. And I obviously want it to drape nicely and not be like too bulky over the boobs, make me look a funny shape or anything like that. All of the fabric is now cut for the cape. And the first thing that I've done is add some interfacing on to the back piece was leather. Just hopefully this will help it strengthen it and hold the crease better, but we'll see. Um, the next step is we want to join together the back and the front pieces on both the outer and the lining. And then after this, I can turn the page. 
We then join the lining and the outers together and turn them out. As I said before, we leave the top edge and the armholes um, open as we don't want to lose the seam allowance on those yet. So I've just put it on now to sort of check the fit of the side seams. Um, I've attached all the leather sections together, wanted to make sure the side seams weren't coming out too much and were too bulky um, before then I put the lining in place. So I'll show you, but I think I'm pretty happy with it. So here is how it's sitting. You think of that being open a little bit more. They're actually sitting really well and nicely with the side seams of the coat. So I'm happy with that. The back obviously looks a bit mad at the moment, but if I can get that crease in place and held, hopefully that will look really, really nice. Um, and the length of these are looking really nice as well, especially once we take up one centimetre. I think it will still hang nicely and it's not too bulky with the leather. So generally, very, very, very happy with this at the moment. Just spent some time doing a couple more of the like faffy bits to do with the cape. So I have top stitched all the way around. It recommended two lines of tops to get stitching, but I decided that that's more of a feature and to do it as more of a feature you'd need a different weight of thread. Um, I quite like it with one line of top stitching. I'm happy with how that's gone. So that's all done there. And then also what I've done, just let me focus this camera a little bit. There we go. Um, just to prevent it from fraying as I'm making the garment, I have zigzagged along the edges that weren't um, turned in and seam allowanced. So I've done that and now we're going to have a look at how this attaches to the coat. That's all clipped in place now where I need to stitch, so around all of the raw edges. Um, and I've also clipped the pleat in place. I'm going to see how we go. I'm going to stitch it at the top. I'll give it an iron when I've got time to leave it for a little while and I'll iron it down and then I'll leave a load of books on top of it or something heavy to sort of hold it in place as it cools and see whether we can get a good crease into the fabric. If not, I'll end up stitching down a little bit to try and hold it in place. Um, but we're just going to see how we go with that um, for the time being. Just a quick update to show you where I'm at. This is how we're looking, so we've got the lever attached, I've just attached the shoulders as well um, but it's all looking really really beautiful and lovely at the front. The back is what I'm going to do next, I'll pop this down, turn it around and show you. So this is what the back looks like and obviously that pleat needs taming. So because I'm about to stop for lunch what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron it in place and then pile a load of really heavy books on top and see whether leaving it for half an hour sort of to cool down afterwards creases it in place if it does but not quite enough then I can always do that overnight tonight um, and if not then we'll look at stitching it in place to help it keep its crease so I've just had my lunch and I am back at it now so a quick update on the pleat I know it's a bit dark but that's sitting much much better now it'll probably need a little bit of stitching to hold it in place um, and I've just clipped the bottom to sort of keep it held nicely but that has actually creased and it is holding a lot lot better. I'm slightly concerned about just a little bit of stretching on this part of the arm um, but we'll see how it is when the arm actually when the sleeve actually goes in. Um, it might be a matter of unpicking that top stitching and just losing that in the seam allowance but we'll see. But other than that, the back's looking good now. So we're going to start on the collar. For the collar, we have the outer piece and the under piece. So I wanted the leather underneath. So when you pop the collar up, it shows and just adds an extra little bit of detail. There's quite a lot of detail in the collar, so it's going to take me a while. Um, but this is the first step. So we want to stitch right sides together along the seam allowance and then turn it the right way out and top stitch. So I've done the collar and top stitched it here, that bit's done. The next part is easier to show you the pictures. Um, so it goes directly underneath the collar and sort of joins the top of the coat to the collar. It looks like it's a little strip with almost like belt loops. Um, so I think there's a little strap detail that goes in there. 
the first thing that we need to do is make these little loops so I think it just looks like we fold a piece over stitch it down both sides and then cut that into however many pieces it says I can't see at the moment it looks like three or four and then we will look at attaching them there I need to have a look and see exactly which pieces these are um, I'll start with those and then we'll move on and see where we get to. I also don't know what fabric I cut these out of. Um, so that'll be interesting and I'll see whether I want to switch it out for the leather or the coat fabric depending on what I've cut. So I think I've worked out what's what. So we've got the outer collar stand and the inner collar stand. Um, I'm actually going to use that one on the outer and that one on the inner. But they're the same piece so that should be fine. Um, and then we have what they call a strap loop. So this is what we're then going to fold over, stitch down both sides and then cut into five. And then that's going to get attached onto the leather piece. So that will be on the outside of the coat. So when you lift the collar up, you'll be able to see that detail underneath. It helps for this, for the most purpose, you're more likely to touch So you probably won't be able to see the stitching there but in order to do that I folded both sides in and stitched it down so they're folded to the middle. That then needs cutting into five and then we can baste it on to the inner collar stand. So for the collar we just need the three stra strap loops and then the other two get saved for on the sleeves. So it says to baste these in place, I've placed them according to the pattern so I'm going to stitch these on. The next stage is to pin the inner collar stand to the collar. So this one's folding over like that. There's going to be a lot of like bending and manipulating to get it in place. Um, so I'll definitely do that with pins rather than the clips. And then I haven't read whether we stitch it yet or not. Let's have a look. Okay, so I've just had a read of that and I've worked out what I'm going to do. But one thing that I've done that I maybe shouldn't have done was um, diagonal stitch down the open edge of the collar. Um, but I'm going to leave that like that because actually the leather stretched quite a lot. Um, and I'm worried that if I undo that and then I attach it separately to each collar stand piece, that the stretching will be very apparent and show. So what I'm going to do is, as I said before, I'm going to stitch this collar to the collar stand first and then I am going to secondly stitch the other side to this collar stand and sandwich the collar between the two. So I'm going to do it in two stages just to make sure that everything sits right, it doesn't stretch out of place, it's not a nightmare to sew. Um, and then that should be nicely sandwiched between with collar stands on each side. So this is all done now, it doesn't look like much here. Um, but what I wanted to say was this has now left us with a really bulky seam. So what I'm going to do is try and cut out as much of the seam allowance in the collar. So the sandwich bit in between. Um, just to bring that bulk down a little bit and help it sit a bit nicer. Um, but you can see see here what it's looking like and um, that went in quite nicely actually so we're very happy we just need to reduce the bulk in this seam so it sits better. So the final bits to do on the collar stand are to stitch down the edges just to join them to the collar and then top stitch around the whole lot um, lifting these up whilst we top stitch so we top stitch those out of the way with we top stitch with those out of the way so we'll come underneath them um, and just hold that in place but the bulk of that seems come out now um, so it will sit a lot better and a lot flatter. That is the collar now done for the time being. We've top stitched, those will fold down like that and it's looking very nice actually. We're happy with that. So now that that bit's done, we're going to do the strap that runs along the back. I've cut this out in the leather and what we've got is we've got two pieces and they go right sides together and we're going to stitch all the way around 
turn it the right way out and then top stitch it down to create one nice long piece. So the collar strap is now done. I'm not gonna lie, that was a complete and utter pain to do. I think it was because it was both, both sides were leather and it just did not want to go through the machine. And also turning it out in the first place was a challenge. Um, but that's done. It, it's all right. It's not going to be looked at in that much detail. And top stitching could be neater, but it, it's not bad and it's not in a bad colour. So I don't think anyone will notice. Now what we do is we attach the middle of this to the middle of the collar. Um, what do you call it? Collar stand bottom bit. Um, and then we can put the belt loops over the top. So I've got this placed on there. It's going to get stitched underneath this belt loop keep calling them belt loops, collar loops, whatever you want to call them. So it's going to get a stitch, just a line of stitching down there and then these can fold over the top and that will stay in place then. So then the last thing before we attach it is to baste these in place along the bottom. I am going to attach the collar now to the rest of the coat. This only gets basted in place um, at the moment. I think it gets fully attached when the facing pieces come in um which i thought was the next step but no i think the sleeve's next yep so yeah this gets basted in place for the time being then we'll do the sleeve and then we'll put the facings in and that will get properly attached to the right seam allowance so i think this is all i've got time to do today because i have got other things that i need to do i need to go and do a food shop um but it's looking very nice so we've got the collar all attached, the little collar straps come round and it looks really cool from the back. The um, This back panel bit still needs a bit of taming, um, but I'm not too worried about it. We'll see how we go. We can iron it again, we can stitch it. I can't actually see what I'm doing back here, um, but we'll get that sorted. But the collar I'm very, very happy with. I love this detail. Um, and then it folds down really nicely and once we've got the facing on here so that this sits um, nicely as well I think it's gonna look really really lovely little belt on yeah it's gonna be really nice and I love this fabric I love the fabrics together yeah just you know you know when you've got the buzz but you're doing really well really well making something I've got that I'm really happy with this so far um, so I'm going to leave it here for today, hopefully pick up with you again tomorrow and we'll see how far we can get. Hello again guys, so it is now Sunday and we've got another full day sewing so I'd really really love to get to the point by the end of today where everything's done except for the buttons and buttonholes as they don't come till tomorrow. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how we go. But the first thing that we've got to do is the sleeves. So I'm going to start on this, by the looks of it, the sleeve, the sleeve strap gets done first and then we construct the sleeves and then we add them in to the coat. So the sleeve straps are these pieces here, I have four of them cut out in the leather. So the first thing to do is right sides together um, and we're going to stitch round, turn it out, and then top stitch round the edges. Next is to baste these straps onto the sleeve pieces, and there's some notches showing exactly where to do this. Now that we've got the strap basted on, we're going to look at the loops. So we've got the final two pieces that we cut earlier. Um, and these are going to go on here. It marks on the pattern exactly where to do it. And what we've got to do is fold an end over, pin it in place, and then stitch it on. So I'll probably do a couple of reverse stitches just in a nice um, invisible thread colour um, to hold it on in each spot. The strap loops are done now, so the next part is connecting the bottom part or the back part of the sleeve. So that's just laid on top now, it's from the higher point of the um, front of the sleeve and it connects down here and you leave this leather bit out so it doesn't get hidden in the seam allowance, it gets left out and you stitch down there. Mm -hmm. 
So now that we've got one side of it connected, we fold it over and pin and sew on the other side here. Right, so the sleeves are now stitched and I'm gonna quickly zoom around with a long open-ended stitch just around the top, um, which means that it can gather to make sure it fits that the, the actual armhole in the coat. Also, um, there is supposed to be interfacing around the top of here I don't know why I've not put it on, I've forgotten to put it on, but it's a bit late now. So if I have any issues, it's my own daft fault. Um, but you should have interfaced the top of the sleeve, hopefully. Okay, so I'm now looking at popping the sleeve in. I've just done one. Um, I don't have many top tips other than the fact that just go into it knowing that sleeves will take time and you need to just make sure that you give it time, lots and lots of attention, lots of pins and you'll get there. The first sleeve I ever put in was like, it came out and it was very, very 80s, like big, big volume in the shoulder, but I've got better since then. I don't mind doing a sleeve too much. So I've got one in, I've pinned it all so the pins are going sort of across um, horizontally. Um, it means that hopefully when I'm stitching it, I don't have to take all of them out. We'll see how the machine copes because there's a lot of fabric layers in there. Um, so it might not like the pins on top of that. But yeah, lots of pins. Gather it as you go and it's one of those where you can pin the whole lot and then realise you've got a bit of excess at the bottom and have to unpin and regather. Um, but as long as you get it right in the prep, it should stitch okay. So that one's in. I'm going to pin the other one and then stitch from both. And again, when you're stitching it, just go in. I'll probably put it on quite a long stitch. You can always go over it a second time, but I'll pop it on quite a long stitch so I'm not putting too much strain on the fabric or stretching it out of place. And we'll just go slow and steady and hopefully it'll be absolutely fine. So the sleeves are in and we're at that really exciting point where it's starting to look um, like a coat and come together. So very, very happy with that. Um, I didn't film me putting in the sleeves because, if I'm honest, there's a lot of effing and blinding and <laughs> trying to get the fabric round and pricking yourself because you've got so many pins in. Like, it's not a nice job, but they're in and I'm very, very happy with how they're sitting. So, we're going to have a look next at the facing and then the lining and yeah, it's all coming together. I also looked at the back a little bit yesterday made a few decisions but haven't done anything yet so I'm going to put in a couple of stitches just to tame it down a little bit stop it from bouncing quite so far out um, so yeah I'm, I'm happy that I know what I'm doing with that now too and yeah it's looking good the first stage of the interfacing is to join all the pieces together at the shoulder seams so shown here I've just lined them all up they've all got um, I call it interfacing the facing pieces are all interfaced, um, so I need to just stitch along the shoulder lines and then we look at joining it into the coat. The next thing we're doing is attaching the facing to the front hems. This is the facing, we want right sides together and we just want to stitch along here. That's because, we're doing this first because the facing is shorter so once that's stitched in order to get it lined up everywhere else it's actually going to come up like that so then it means that when we stitch the rest of it we've got that um, already in, like done. So the next step here I have pinned or clipped the entire sort of length and around the neckline. The neckline feels quite difficult there's a lot of fabric and it's a lot of like bending it to the shape that the rest of it is rather than it like falling into place um, but hopefully that will be absolutely fine and then you can see what I was on about earlier where we've already attached it here so that it allows you to turn it up and then this will be invisible on the inside part there. So I had to move where this hang this is hanging now because it's getting quite heavy um, but this is how we're looking. I've attached all of the facing although this now needs top stitching round because you can see it's not quite sitting flat down here and um, the pattern says to top stitch it which I think will help a lot with that. Um, I'm just going to top stitch up to where the neck stand is because quite honestly I don't think my machine's going to cope 
going around the rest. Um, but I think that will be fine and I think I'll be able to press this a lot flatter if I give it some time and use my tailor's hand to sort of get in nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm going to top stitch this next and then we can have a look at the next steps. That has now got all the top stitching done and it's sitting so much better for it. We've not got it sort of peeping through to the front anymore. Um, excuse all the mess, I've just got like a random load of heaps of all my sewing stuff there. Um, so yeah, that's looking so much better now. And then the next job is to just place in the shoulder pads and sort of tack them in place. These are the shoulder pads that I've got. They're just a size small, um, so hopefully they'll be okay. They have got Velcro so they can be detachable, but I'm going to attach them without that so that they're not, um, because the last thing I want is to go putting it on and then lose a shoulder pad and have to um, unpick some of the lining to get it out. So I'm going to stitch those on properly. Um, before lining the coat. The shoulder pads are in. Potentially a bit of a bigger shoulder pad would have given a slightly sharper um, lift um, but they're in, they're sitting okay so we're happy about that. Um, they've just been like tacked in place by hand stitching so a bit messy but it'll do the job. So I've made it on to doing the lining now. So as I go and as I sort of bring pieces in I'm going to zigzag stitch around the edge of all of them just to help with the fraying. Um, so the first step is putting the darts in. So that will be on the two front pieces. So I'm gonna zigzag around the edges and then put the darts in those. The two front pieces are now done. So next, I have the two back pieces to join. So again, I'll zigzag around the edges and then join down the back to where the flap starts. So the back has been done and a little pleat has been added right at the centre seam at the top um, of that as well. And then the next step is to attach the front pieces to the back pieces sort of down the sides and at the shoulders. Just to update you, so I've carried on a little bit because a lot of it was sort of repeating the steps we'd done on the outer of the coat. Um, so the sleeves are now in on the lining. Um, they went in absolutely fine. I can't remember actually what I last updated you on. Um, but anyway, the lining's all attached and ready to go. So we're going to look at attaching it to the main coat. So as far as attaching it to the main coat, what we've got to do is right sides together. So I'm going to slip the lining over the top of the actual coat um, and then we can join and sort of line up the seams. Right, so I've worked out what I'm doing. It all feels a bit weird at the moment, but basically you've got right sides together. So you've slipped the lining over your sleeves um, and then you're matching the lining edge with the facings. So what I've done first is I've pinned it at the shoulder seams um, to make sure they line up nicely and then I'm going to pin it down the facings. It's all going to feel a bit weird because it's sort of like the bagging out method. Um, we also need to leave an opening um, down one of the sides for it all to turn back out again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll pin it, stitch it and then catch up with you afterwards. Okay, so I've just turned it the right way out again and as you can see the lining's all attached. Um, the hole is down this side somewhere, I can't remember where it is. It's there, so that's in there. Um, it, I've not pressed it or anything yet, so it'll look better after I press, but that's looking really, really nice in there. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to do the sleeves next or whether I'm going to leave that for today and carry on probably on Friday. I'll see, I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, so we are gonna look at sleeves. What I have done is I have turned them up slightly and then I have put a pin just holding the lining to the outer of the coat. So then in order to do it, we bring the sleeve down and out the bottom of the coat, both the lining and the outer of the Leave, so you can't see that but here you go so you've got the lining and the outer and they are joining by one pin that's just sort of notching it in place um, then we're going to pin round and attach 
the lining to the outer. So now that we've got that there, we can take it round and attach it and sew it. So one sleeve is now done and you can see that the outer turns in and then the lining's attached all the way around. So I'm now going to do exactly the same with the other sleeve. So I want to fold it in, attach the lining with a little pin just to mark it in place, bring it out through the bottom and then pin it around and stitch it. So I'm going to do that with this sleeve. Hey guys, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet on the filming today because it's Friday evening and I'm rather tired. But I want to um, get this coat finished other than the buttons and the buttonholes or as close to as possible. I don't know whether I'll do the belt today. Um, but I definitely want to get this lining finished. So, the first job to do, I have turned it all inside out again, and it is to attach the lining to the bottom hem. So we're just gonna do this bottom line. On this side, the lining is gonna come short of the outer, and on the other side, it should match. So I'm gonna pin that along. Um, if you want to turn it up and iron it first, then you can do that. I'm going to pin it along, stitch it, and then we'll have a look at how we attach the vent properly. So as you can see now, I have stitched the hem, I've ironed it flat, and made sure that it sits right on me. The last part to do is the vent. So on the side where the lining matches to the outer, I have just pinned it all the way up the side, and that's where I'm going to stitch. On the other side... So where the outer came further than the lining, the lining actually gets pulled to meet the outer and you end up with this bit, little bit down here that you finish off afterwards with hand stitching. Um, I'll show you in the instruction book just to make it a bit clearer but I have pinned that so I'm going to stitch both of those. We'll see if this explains it a little bit better. So as you can see down here you've got a little bit of excess at the corner and then in the next step you can see how that's folded over and hand stitched just to neaten it off nicely. So after that is done I'm going to do a couple of bits of like hand stitching, neaten it up. I'm going to do the buttonholes tomorrow which I don't know whether I'm going to film or not. I'm going to do them at my parents house um, because my mum's machine's much better at buttonholes than mine is. So I might film that, I might not film that. Um, but if I'm not, then the next clip you'll see is the finished garment um, as it's only for sort of last little tiny bits to finish off at this point. Hey guys, so I wanted to show you the finished coat. So this is how we are looking. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. Really, really happy with it. So what have I done since I last spoke to you? I've obviously done buttons and buttonholes. Buttons are just hand stitched on. Buttonholes I was hoping to do with the buttonholer function on my mum's machine um, but due to the fabric it didn't pull through properly so I have done them sort of the more traditional way by doing the zigzag stitch and then not zigzagging the ends with the longer stitch so that's how I've done those. Um, the belt and the belt loops were basically the same techniques I've gone over and over and over um, during this make so the belt was um, right sides together, turned out, top stitched round, and then the belt loops were done exactly the same way as the collar ones were. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little twirl in a second. But this is how we're looking. As far as the pattern um, and following that, it was, I think the actual pattern and pattern sizing, pattern style and everything was really, really good. It was so nice to have a pattern with so many extra details on it, as I find Sometimes sewing patterns, they just dumb it down and give you the absolute base of what you want. So it was really nice to have all the extra details on. The pictures within the pattern instructions were really, really help helpful and quite straightforward to follow. Although when you did end up reading some of the blurby stuff, a little bit more difficult to follow. Um, but yeah, we've managed. This is what we've got. Okay, so this is the back of the garment. Hopefully you can see that all sitting quite nicely. The cape part comes out quite a way. I like that because of the cinched in waist, I think that the cape gives drama. Um, but when I've shown other people, they're a little bit more unsure of it. So completely up to you whether you want to do the cape like I've done it, or whether you want to do it one straight piece and not alter it. But I do love the front, how it um, 
what you may call it, it's a lot sharper than having the curvedness to it. So yeah, that's the back of it. Oh, also the back collar looks like that, so that can pop up nicely there. Um, so yeah, very, very successful make, very happy and pleased with this one. Quite proud of this one, I have to say. I think it's one of my better makes that I've done, um, and definitely one of the more challenging ones. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me. I know this has been a very, very long one and a lot of content in order to make this um, coat. So if you made it this far, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.